So we're, we're starting now. Okay, sir. Yeah. Hello. Yes, it's uh, another Sunday evening in Lagos, and uh, you're welcome to Dr. Abayomi Ajayi live. And my name is Dr. Abayomi Ajayi. Today, uh, you'll have noticed that we changed the timing of uh, the live broadcast. It's going to be happening the last Sunday of every month now. Uh, but today, it's a very special day, and uh, we have a guest in the house, uh, well, on Zoom, because uh, we're going to be talking to somebody who is going to be sharing a testimony from all the way from the United States of America, precisely from Atlanta. She's going to be telling us about her fertility journey, uh, and how she became a mother at 54. Um, as a form of introduction, um, by 2018, about 8 million babies have been delivered from my year for the world. The interesting thing is that these babies are normal babies. They are they're comparable to children born, if you like to use the word naturally. But nothing has elicited different reactions and emotions that the age at which women can do a year. Among the populace, it elicits fascination. But among doctors, it elicits concerns. You know? Concerns as to what can happen during pregnancy and even after pregnancy. We remember the world's oldest mother, Eramati Mangama, who had twin baby girls in India at the age of 74 years. On the 5th of September, 2019, after 57 years of childless, a childless marriage, well, the interesting thing that was that the two of them, her husband was 78, she was 74, the two of them ended up in the intensive care unit. And that made people to talk a little bit also about people, older people having IVF. Fortunately, the two of them are still alive. But today we have a different story. Uh, we're talking to Mrs. Olubumi Olubudi, who had a set of boys. I just saw the boys. Lovely looking boys, trust me. Um, at the age of 54. So she's the one I'm going to be talking to today. So, Bumi, how are you? I'm fine, sir. Good to see you. Good to see you, sister. Right. Um, please tell us about yourself. Tell a little bit about yourself. Um, <clears throat> my name is Olu Bumi, Olu Bodi. Uh, we are three in family, my two siblings. And I'm the only daughter. I was born in March 7, 1966. Uh, I lost my mom. I, did, I was about to get married when my mom passed out. I give glory to the Almighty God for my life. Great, great. All right, great. So tell us now about your fertility journey. I'm sure so many people are eager to hear you. Uh, you had your set of twins at 54. Um, tell us how did this happen? It was a long story. Very long story and long journey. When I got married, in every home, what they want is a year after marriage. They say, Congrat congratulations, congratulations, but nothing like that. It was second third year. I was like, oh. So that's how we started. From one hospital to the other, people will say, go to Babala, but daddy will say, no, don't go to any of Allah, don't go to any of Allah. God is going to do it. Just go, be going to the hospital. I know one day God will answer you. I went through a lot. I went through a lot. I went through a lot. But today I give glory to the Almighty God. In, in Nigeria, I went to so many hospitals, I spent a lot of money. Mm. before I joined my husband in the United States of America. I passed through a lot. If I say a lot, I don't want to go there a lot, but I give glory to the Almighty God. When mm. I came to America, people were saying, let her go to the hospital. I went, I started going to, and I went to like, three fertilities hospitals in this, Ameri in this America. We did a lot of studies, serious of studies. They did nothing that became pregnant. Okay. We are using, I use medication, a lot of things in my womb that don't work this month. Ah, no, 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 you said nothing. Nothing. After we have tried so many, I told my husband, 
I said, I'm not going to do anything again. What I want to do now, let me, let me go and adopt a child. He said, is that what you want? I said, that is what I want. Um, there was pressure from home, not from my husband's uh, family, but from my own brothers. They said, anytime they travel to our, our, our daddy's hometown, they say, ah, when is she going to have a child? Are you people not doing anything? Are you people not doing anything? Especially my brother's wife. So I told my husband, I'm not going to do any fertility or clinic again. I want to go and adopt a child. He said, okay, if that's what you want, let's go. So that's how we started the journey. We went, they said, you are going to pay $26,000 to adopt a newborn baby, but we pay $1,000 for a form. So we started attending the, the, the class. The last day of the class, the lawyer came and the lawyer said, when you adopted the child, you will disclose the identity to the parent, to the biological parents. They will be coming to your house to visit you. If they want the baby, baby back, you have, you have to release the baby. I said, wow, after paying all this stuff, all this money, they said, yes. I said, okay. So I asked him, they gave us constant form. And I asked him, can I go home with the form? So I'll come back. He said, sure. We went, when we got inside the car, for like 30 minutes, we didn't talk to each other. So the time my husband now said, are you sure you still want to go on this? I said, no. He said, why? I said, mm -mm. This is too much. That maybe I'll, I should call my brother's wife in Nigeria. That maybe you will help me to adopt a child in Nigeria, then I'll go to Nigeria to pick up. He said, okay. Immediately we got home, my daddy called and said, ah, Bumi, I want to tell you something. I said, what is this? He said, I'm begging you in the name of God. Don't go and look for a child in Egypt. I said, what do you mean? He said, because what I mean by Egypt is like going to have a list. I didn't say you do not adopt a child. You can adopt a child, but you are still going to try to have your own. This thing is mine. It's, it's different from this thing is ours. And I told him, I said, Daddy, I don't want to go to any hospital again. I'm fed up. He said, you have to do it. We cut off the lights and bye. Like two hours after, he called me again. I was started talking about it. And that was the last day we talked because the third day, he passed. What? The third day, it, we, we spoke on Saturday, but on yeah. one day, he died. Wow. It, it was telling me, before you adopt a child, have your own first. I told him, but later I announced and said, okay, let me try what he said. So I now call my brother's wife. When I call my brother's wife and I told him that I'm ready to do it, I said, since all these days, since all these days, I'll be begging you, say, I don't want to do it again. Okay, we give glory to the Almighty God. I said, okay, I'll be thinking about it. We talk. So we came, I went to Nigeria for the burial. They were saying, she thought I would wait for it. I said, no, that was 2016. I told him, no, I'm still, I'm still thinking about it. He said, why are you wasting your time? I said, I'm not wasting my time. I've tried. So later, when I came back to US, she, told, she now told me that, ah, you know my friend. I said, we should be a friend. She said, um, Auntie Eronti. And I said, Auntie Eronti, or Lord She now said, yeah, because I know some of her friends, they, they, they are sharp with friends. And, she, and I said, yes, she said, ah, the husband has a hospital in Ikoyo. Uh, that is I have a fertility center. Can you call home? And I said, um, later. So later I decided to, and I call her one day, I said, I will come. So one day I just, on my on my WhatsApp, I just saw hi. When I shared it, I saw it, I said, oh. And I said, hello, ma. So that's how we started chatting. So they, she now introduced me to not scare me. So not scared me, start calling me, talking to ask about my well-being. So later I they introduced me to Dr. Shanu. Dr. Shanu is a wonderful man. May God bless him. May God bless, bless him, not scared me. May God bless all medical things that him best. So Dr. Shanu, we started the journey together. So he said, I know that you pay the money together. Anytime you have anything, you can pay it. That's how I send me the money. If I have $1,000, I pay, I send it to Nigeria. If I have $2,000, I send it to Nigeria. So that day, I just told my husband, my husband said, when are you going? 
I supposed to come to Nigeria around March. I told him, let's wait till let's wait till um my, uh, let's wait till June or July. So in July, uh, June, I came down to Nigeria. I give glory to the Almighty God for what God has done. God really used Nordica for me. So I thank Great. God for that. Great, thank you. So you, you had only one cycle, one yes, cycle. Yes, yeah. sir. Are you aware that you're very lucky that it's not everybody who has that kind of experience? I give glory to the Almighty God. Great. I want to show. I want to show you a picture. I wanted to show you a picture, and yes, uh, uh, you tell me what you what you feel about this picture. What, what does it remind you of? The picture. Wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> ah, even the day I took this picture. That was my best day. Oh. It was on, on a mother, mother's day. Oh, okay. It yeah. was on a mother's day, May 14th. Wow, that's great. That's great. So, what did you, I mean, when you saw this picture, you were just telling me before the program started that you, it, the, the person who used the picture did not authorize, you did authorize her. What did you, what did you, feel, what did you feel about when you saw this picture? I don't even know that any picture is going on virus. Nobody just called me. It was this woman that I think it's, um, what is that name? Top of said, congratulations, auntie. I said, I said, congratulations for what? So later, my brothers who have now called me that I should go on Instagram and Facebook that she will not say anything. When I opened my Facebook, I said, wow. I said, I said, but she didn't tell me anything. She just, I was like, huh? Yeah. Then I called her. She said, she said, I'm sorry that she just put one and tagged somebody. That it was the best that, that she tagged that make it viral. Actually, that was the picture that we also saw. And then, <laughs> because as much as possible, we want to respect the privacy of patients, except people who, like you, don't mind talking about. It. Because you know, in Nigeria, there's a lot of hush hush thing going around that idea. We're grateful for, for your life that uh, you are one of those people who don't mind talking about, about it. Now, I want to ask you, how was your pregnancy like? Huh? Uh, what happened the first day I went to the hospital, my doctor said, even if there is pain, just remember there will be joy after the pain. Okay. So I said, okay. So it, the, it was very, very smooth. Monday, nothing, even no no money sickness, nothing until January second. I went to work as I was coming. I said bleeding. So that was my colleague in the car. She now said, "Please, can you park?" She called nine one one. They took me to the hospital. <laughs> when we got to the hospital, you know why people the way they behave. They said this, this pregnancy is just empty weeks. There is nothing we can do. Just put it by his side. If you feel able, just bring out the baby. I just said, just like that. I said, look here. I'm not going to lose this one. Do you know my age? She said, yes. I'm not going to lose this one. This one is for me and it's for me forever. I'm not going to lose them. He said, oh, you're not going to. Are they twins? I thought they are twins, but they're coming to this one. She said, okay, we can stay there. And I'll talk to God. The bleeding stopped. Mm -hmm. So when the bleeding, when the doctor came, the doctor now shared me. He said, okay, we are going to just observe you for 24 hours. That if, but if there is anything that is not, and I ask her that, even if the baby comes, what will happen to them? He said, we we'll flush them. I said, you flush them? She said, yes. I said, it's not my portion. So my, my pastor was there and the wife. <clears throat> the, <clears throat> I'm sorry. The, a lot of series of tests were carried out. So she now came, she said, after the test, after this, when the result comes, we don't know if there is any uh, mistakes or any, anything that are going to bring out the babies. I told her it's not my question. My pastor now answered and said, it is well. So they left. In the morning again, before I, my pastor was there, she came with us. She now said, nothing happened to the baby. The baby are okay. 
I said, oh, glory to the Almighty God. He said, you can go home now. That, but she will put me on bed rest till I deliver. I said, there is no problem. She said, don't worry, I'll write to your working place. I said, okay, thank you very much. So on my wedding anniversary, which is March 17, I was just walking in the, in the house. I started bleeding again. Before I could say anything, my niece staying with me called 911. So they came, they took me back to the hospital. So the, the same nurse now said, oh, they are 28 weeks, they can, they can come. I said, they are not coming. That my doctor told me that he is going to I, I do the CS when my babies are 38 months, uh, 38 weeks, sorry. That I'm not, they are not coming. Nothing will happen to this baby. So I was in the hospital like for four days. The bleeding stopped again. I came back home. So the journey was sm smoothly except the blading. I give glory to the Almighty God. Nothing happened to me, no vomiting, no headache, no back pain, nothing except the blading. But I'm still going to talk about the bleeding later. Well, you're going to talk about the bleeding later. Okay, yes. somebody just asking me to, or uh, reminding me to ask you about acupuncture. That did you have acupuncture in during this? I, uh, I did. I did, and the acupuncture really helps me a lot. How did number you, one, yeah, tell me more about number, it. The day, the day the nurse introduced the acupuncture to me, she put it on her hand. I said, you want to put pin on me? She now said, I said, no, I don't think I'll do this. My husband was there. My husband said, you have to do it. You have to do it. It's part of the treatment. I said, okay, no problem. So the first day, she, she explained everything to me. So even when she was doing the, the first one, I fell asleep. The, the back one, I, when I got home, I slept from 6 p.m. till the second day. Really relaxed me, the blood flows well, everything was. The acupuncture is very, very, even people I introduced to, not the, I told them that the acupuncture is most. Wow. No wonder she said that she's trying to remind me that we should talk about acupuncture. Yeah, I've been, I've been saying I will also go for acupuncture since all these days, but I've not really had time to do that. Anyway, so let's go back to, you know, you've had your babies for about over three months now. Tell us yes. about your experience, your motherhood experience. Very, very great. Yeah? Uh, before, before I talk about them, let me quickly talk about the blood. Good, good, okay. So the day of the delivery, after the CS, the, after the C CS surgery, the doctor said, these baby are miracle babies. Mm. I said, why? He said, because you have very big um, fibroid. I said, fibroid. I did test, I did everything before the, this, uh, the IVF. He said, it doesn't mean anything. But this baby were the ones sitting on the on the um, fabric. That, that, that is why they didn't see it for nine months. He said that is what causes the bleeding all the time. It's not the IVF issue. It's the issue, the issue is for me, the fibroid. So it was fibroid, not the IVF issue. Okay. Because the doctor said it's the fibroid that makes mm. me to bleed like that, but they didn't see it. Because the baby were on it. That's oh. why they didn't, they couldn't find it. Mm. So about the, 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 the mother, the, my, the best day of my life was the day I delivered my baby. The day the doctor said, congratulations, the twin A is out. I started singing. He said, you have not seen the second one. And he said, the God that brought the first one bring out the second one. So he now brought out the second. He said, "Look at the look at the second one." As I singing to God be the glory, everybody in the theater they sang with me. So when we came, you know, it was CS and this time of coronavirus. My brother's wife wanted to come from Nigeria, but she couldn't make it. So it was me and my husband alone, and it is my first child, children. So at night, oh my God, he helped me to get off of the bed. He will give me the baby, but I was still happy that I'll be a mother. I'm a mother. I have my own child or my own children. 
God, I give glory to the Almighty God who God did in my life. And I thank Nodika too, because there is no way to call me mommy without measuring Nodika Fertility Center. Thank you so much. Now, there, there's some of our viewers are asking questions. They ask it. So I'm going to. Um, this is from Gabriela Demola. I said, could you please ask her about the expectations two days before the successful delivery of the Miracle Twins? So, yeah, and that, is, that, that is my husband. Are you kidding? Are you kidding? <laughs> <laughs> oh, so there must be a story. There must be a story to it. <laughs> <laughs> if it's your husband, there must be a story to it. That's my husband. Yeah. So, so, can you repeat the question? Sir? Yes, he said I should ask you about the expectations two days before the successful delivery of the miracle twist. Your expectations two days before the delivery. Huh? I was so nervous. Of course. Rightfully so. I, I was so nervous. That what, what he was talking about is, you know, they told me in the hospital that we have to do coronavirus that screening. Oh, yeah. So that whosoever I'll stay with me, we should come together. Mm. So we went. Now told her after they will call us 24 hours if there is anything. We yeah. need 24 hours. So anytime my phone just came, I'll pick it up. <laughs> I, I was so nervous that maybe I'll, <laughs> that's what he was talking about. I didn't allow him to sleep. Even to eat, like, you want to eat? You know, you know, please don't kill me because of this coronavirus. Even if you have it, it's not going to kill you. And they have not called you. Let them call you if there is anything. So that's what he was talking about. Wow. See, I think that's a very important point because this coronavirus has changed the scape of everything completely. Even to have a baby now, you're concerned about corona. Every aspect of our life has been changed. And I hope and pray that people will just respect that. And, you know, somebody told me that the, probably the greatest thing we can do in the year 2020 is to make sure that we stay alive by not contracting coronavirus. Yeah, so yeah. thank you for telling, sharing that with us. I have one question I still want to ask you. Yes, sir. Uh, people talk about IVF being expensive, especially in Nigeria, especially. Is, is that so? What's your own experience? It's more cheaper in Nigeria than that space. I always knew that, but I just wanted <laughs> I just wanted you to confirm that. Yeah, tell us it's yeah, what yeah, go on. It's more cheaper. But the only the, the only thing about this place is they can finance it. Yeah. You'll be paying later. You'll mm -hmm. be paying them every month. Okay. That is different. Oh, but yeah. it's more expensive here than yeah. Nigeria. And here. That they, they will be mindful. They don't want you to sue them if they're any mistake. Yeah. But in Nigeria, uh, no. Is you, you people are wonderful people. You are wonderful people. Thank you. They really try. They, they will call me in the morning. Good morning, Mrs. Olubo. I'll be taking your medication. Good afternoon, Mrs. Olubo. I'll be taking your medication. Good evening, Mr. Lugo. They will not ask you here. If you like, you take your medication. If you don't like, you don't take Because the, you can sue them that they are doing too much of you. <laughs> right. Right. I think uh, the um, legal aspect of medicine in America is a little bit diff it's different from what we have in Nigeria. Yes. So, um, yes, will you do this again? Now you have a second. Sir, so, I give glory to the Almighty God. <laughs> I asked for one, he gave me two. Wow, that's great. I give, even the day I was doing the IPL, this is supposed to be a secret, but I'll share it. The, the day of the plantation, yes. the doctor, they, put, they, they were not showing me the thing on the screen, showing me the embryo. They, they wanted to put three. I said, please, can you please put two? So I said, let's put three. I said, with my head, no, please, three is okay. She was looking at me. I said, I'm, I'm, I'm really sorry about this. I'm okay with two. So when they finish, even the, the music in the in the theater, oh my God, like you are, you are saying God. So when I was on the bed, the nurse said, she, she's about to put this thing. Are you 
please pray. And I said, I'm praying. I close my eyes. I'm talking to God because I have to remember him some stuff. Like you said, that there shall be no violence in my land. Mm. Yeah, that you said you make Abraham to be the mother, the father of the nations. So I said, I'm talking to him. That knows me, God bless her wherever she is. I don't know her name, but may God bless her. Amen. Amen. Okay. Um, maybe on a final note, um, what words of advice will you give to people who are passing through this uh, period where they are waiting? Firstly, I pray to I pray that by this time next year I will find their babies in Jesus' name. Amen. For with God, nothing shall be possible. There is nothing God cannot do. God is not a liar. He would never lie. He said there shall be no barrenness in my land. Uh, my advice to them is five. Number one, they should not keep malice with anybody. Number two, they should have forgiven spirits. They should love people around them. Then they should go to the hospital. IVF is God that gave them the knowledge. Some will say, no, 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 I can't do it. No, don't say that. It's God that gave them the knowledge. That is why God makes it to be successful. Mm. So another, uh, 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 they should not look at people mocking them. If Perina did not mock mm, mm, Hannah, God might not remember Hannah because Hannah just go, we, we we read it in the, we read it in Bible all the time. Hannah go go to uh, went to Shiloh every year to pray, but they never mentioned the day he talked to God about having children. But the day Perina mock her. She went back to the altar and talked to God, and God remembered her. Mm. That's another one. Another one is your mother-in-law, your father-in-law, your sister-in-law, your brother-in-law can talk because their joy is after one year, they should congratulate them that my, bro my, 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 my son's wife have delivered baby, but nothing like that. They will, if it is me, I will talk. If it is you, you will talk. But don't look at that. Just focus on God. There is nothing God cannot do. And they should not be fighting their husband because where there is love, there is peace. Where there is peace, that's where God stays. We can, we can see the support that you get from your husband. Even, My husband really supports really support me. Sir. Yeah, yeah it, it's obvious. Even while you're at the program, you sent a message. There is this message that I want you to... This, I know this person also is from the States. She's a Nigerian living in the States. And she said, how long did the process take? Also, did you, how long did you come, to, how long were you in Nigeria for, for the process? Just two months. Two months. Okay. Yes, sir. I'm sure the person has heard you. So, yeah, I think uh, it's been wonderful talking to you. Um, I'm so grateful for your life. And um, I thank God for the blessing that he has given you with your twins uh, and uh, for the love that he has sh showered on you. Um, I will just pray that the Lord will continue to keep you and keep your children. And Amen. That they will, you will live to old age and uh, you will continue to enjoy his blessings in Jesus' name. Thank you so Amen. much for sharing your Thank story. You very much, and Thank then, you very much, Yes. And God be with you. Thank you so much. I'm Thank sure you very much. Some of the questions we will answer. If we need to ask you, you can send. We can send messages to you to answer some of them. But uh, it's, it's been wonderful talking to you, and thank you thank so you. much for taking the time to talk to us. It's so, my pleasure. right. So, it's on this note we're going to end today. Um, I'm sure you must have enjoyed uh, the uh, testimonial that you heard. Uh, it's also a challenge for people to share their stories. Don't keep your blessings to yourself. I believe that IVF, having children after a long period of waiting is something that is a blessing and uh, we need to help other people who are going through this thing so that they will know exactly what to do. So it's on this note, I'll see you the next time. Thank you so much for spending time with us and we'll see you next month. Thank you.